Hey there survivors, Cougar here with more gameplay from the post-apocalyptic city building society building game Frostpunk. I'm starting the game paused here to just to talk for a second about a couple of the stupid mistakes I made in the last uh, episode. First of all, leaving that research unassigned for so long, I basically wasted an entire day's worth of research. Now, we're playing on normal difficulty, so we should be able to bounce back from such a stupid mistake. If we were on hard difficulty, that's the kind of mistake that could cost you a playthrough. So, uh, we'll try to salvage this playthrough despite my idiocy in not assigning that research for so long. The other mistake that I made uh, was in when I chose our last research topic, uh, I said that we should really unlock this next tier of upgrades, um, and but went with the coal thumper instead. Now that is going to be a problem because we've just brought these new uh, these new survivors back into base. At the end of the last episode, we found our first group of survivors out in the Frostland and brought them back into the base. And we have no place to house them now because the next set of house houses are on this first tier of uh, research, the, the bunk houses. We are going to have to build houses out in the next ring around the generator and building tents out here is going to be a real problem. In fact, we're not even going to do that. We're going to try to... I'm going to go ahead and unpause this. We're going to try to stretch this out and get that research finished uh, fast, fast enough to fast enough to, to get the bunk houses built in this next ring. And, and not put tents out there because the, they're just going to freeze to death if we put tents that far away from the generator. Got a message. Radical treatment, first amputation to save this patient's life. We had to perform an amp amputation. As a result, this person won't be able to work. Uh, we must do something about it. It wants us to issue another law, the care house, where these people can... Um, be taken care of even as amputees. We're not going to worry about that right now. Plus, we cannot issue a uh, law right now because it's still on cooldown from the last law that we issued. So, we've got 36 homeless survivors now and nothing to... no way to build them houses until we get that next tier of research unlocked and research the bunk houses. They'll probably be okay... Sorry, they'll probably be okay uh, for one night out here at night. They're not going to freeze to death. They'll just put sleeping bags around the generator here, and they'll probably be okay for one night. Some of them may get sick, but uh, there's really nothing we can do about it based on the, the stupid decisions we made from the last episode. But, again, the second stupid decision I made, the, the choosing the coal thumper as research instead of unlocking this next tier. Now that rolls back to the first stupid mistake I made. If we had actually chosen a new research project immediately after the uh, last one had finished, then we would have had time to have two research projects completed before that last group of survivors arrived. And so, see, it kind of snowballs. When you make a stupid decision like that right off the bat, that's where, on hard difficulty, it just snowballs from there. You see the people with no homes just stamping their feet and trying to camp out and sleep here around the generator. That is obviously not ideal, but I think we can make it work for one night. And then hopefully, if you look down here at our tech progress bar, hopefully that coal thumper will be researched tomorrow and maybe we can even plow through and get the bunk houses researched. In fact, building a second workshop is something that we should consider at this point. Now, our Book of Laws cooldown has ended, so we should be able to sign a new law here. Uh, it wants us to issue the care house law, 
the gravely ill and amputees will be cared for at low cost in special home. Now it is good to have a care house. The problem is we will have to build a care house within a certain amount of time if we choose to issue this law. I do want to issue it at some point, but I don't know if right now is the best time. Um, we could issue the extended shift one now. We probably won't need this right this second. Listen, everyone. New law is signed. But we'll we'll have it we'll have it there for us if we need it. And we only have one amputee at this point, so it's not putting too much of a burden on our infrastructure to take care of that one amputee who's not doing any work. So I, I think we can wait on the care house law. Um, we have a lot of people not actually working. We have 21 workers not doing anything. We should probably think about building maybe another... Well, I'm going to save them. Once we research... We, we need to build another uh, sawmill down here to be gathering more wood. But we're going to be... The next thing that we're going to unlock through the research is going to be a, a coal thumper. And when you build a coal thumper, you need to build uh, gathering posts near the coal thumper. Which, So you're talking about a lot of manpower to make a coal thumper work. You need people to operate the coal thumper and you need people in the gathering houses to collect up the coal that the coal thumper brings to the surface. So I'm going to just hold off assigning these peeps for now maybe put a couple more workers on the cookhouse. Work time. Get moving. We could try to make up for the idiocy in the last episode by building another workshop right away. Why don't we do that, in fact? We can put it out here a little bit farther away from the generator. We could even put it farther away than that, but we're not going to. We need to build a street out to it. Okay. You see the icon here turns red. That indicates the street is under construction, but it is connected to a street. Alright, this tech is researching pretty quickly now. Uh, so we may be able to blast through this and get some bunkhouses built so that these new arrivals are not sleeping out in the cold for a second night. We just gotta be patient on that. It's almost researched now. Alright. Researched. Let's unlock the next set of the next tier. And then as soon as that is done we can research the bunkhouses. And this workshop is almost completed. As soon as that's completed, we will assign more engineers to speed up this research even more. They'll immediately get to work. Alright, our scouts have arrived at the Sturdy Shelter. Let's check in on them. Okay. Let's explore the Sturdy Shelter. It looks like we gain, we stand to gain supplies in the form of wood, food rations, and steam cores. Now, we haven't really talked about steam cores yet. Steam cores are special items that you can only find out here in the world. Um, go ahead and explore. The shelter is comfortable and well-equipped with emergency supplies. You'll There's a notice posted by the heavy round door. To all scientists, if you use any supplies, remember to notify the quartermaster upon your return to the city. This means there's another city out there. A signpost by the trail points in two directions. London, 1,934 miles. Home, 27 miles. A site was discovered, the Steel Bridge. Let's take those resources. We don't immediately have to drag them back to base. Why don't we go on to the next site that's fairly close here, which is the steel bridge. See what's there. All right. While our scouts head to the steel bridge, let's get back to town. We can now build coal thumpers. So let's get one of those built. It does not have to be, again, it does not have to be near a coal resource but we do want to have it in a slot where it's at least conceivable that we can build some gathering posts near it. 
that looks all right. That's probably not ideal. That's not a fantastic place to put it, but it's okay. And then let's immediately build at least one gathering post there to start collecting that. Oh, wait, there is a gather. There already is a gathering post here, so that's great. That actually turned out to not be a bad place to build it because this gathering post will start gathering the coal from that once it starts operating. And that means we don't have to assign more people to the gathering post either. Which leaves us with more people to... Oh, is this heater off? It's out of... Emergency shift. Oh, that's that's telling us we can't... Could not resume production requires raw food. All right, we need to build another hunter's hut as well. With these new survivors arriving in town, we're going to need more raw food coming in. Uh, I don't need to put this very close to the generator because people aren't actually going to work in here. They're just going to use it as a base for getting out into the wild. Need to build a street to connect it. There we go. Now it's connected. And as soon as that is built, we will assign more hunters to that, and as soon as the coal thumper is built, we'll assign some workers to that. Because we have a bunch of workers just standing by with nothing to do. Do all of our children have room in our children's shelter? There are 14 of 15 children in here. Children not in child shelters, four. I, I don't think we need to build another one right away, but we sh we're going to have to think about building a second child shelter at some point. Uh, our storage is near capacity at the gathering post. I think it's time for us to build our first secondary resource depot. Mm, in order to do that, we need steel. And I don't think we have... Do we have anybody gathering steel right now? No. All right, so let's put 10 gatherers on steel. And then the coal thumper has been built. Let's assign the max number there. And now we have no more people not doing anything. And now is, of course, now we need more people to do stuff because now we have this other hunter's hut. All right, our s next tier of upgrades has been researched. So let's immediately go to the food, health, and shelter thing and start researching bunk houses and check the time it's getting kind of late I don't I'm not confident that these bunk houses are going to be researched in time yeah before night falls that's not going to be great our coal thumper is operating it's starting to bring up some coal Oh, our research... The research day has ended. Research has stopped for the night. We did not make it to bunkhouses in time. And see, again, this is where that freaking huge mistake on the first day starts to snowball. It's just going to make the whole rest of this playthrough much more difficult. You know, it's it, at this point, if, it, if I weren't doing this playthrough to share with you guys, I would almost consider trashing it and starting over because... A, a huge mistake, wasting an entire day of research. It's going to be hard to bounce back from. Captain, people are understandably concerned about the lack of shelter. I know! They're falling ill from sleeping outside in this terrible cold. I know! We better do something about it. I know! I'll provide shelter! I, I have two days to provide shelter for at least half of our citizens. I actually could have chosen the other option there because I do intend to provide shelter for all of these citizens, and we probably would have gotten a larger health uh, hope boost if I had done it that way. You know, I, I gotta pull people off something here to put them in the... in the... to get more hunters out tonight. We're... We're running low on storage space. I do still intend to build more storage, another resource depot, but we need the steel to do that. Steel that I was not gathering. Alright, so steam cores. I started talking about steam cores. Hold on. One more message. The wisdom of the crowd. Crafton, when facing demands, remember this. People usually look for the quickest solution, not the best one. You don't have to agree with everything they ask for. If you fix the problem your way, it's fine. I'll bear that in mind. Thank you. 
Okay, so steam cores are special items that you can only find out in the world. I think later on you can build them yourself, but I've never actually progressed that far to the point where you could build a factory and maybe that's where you can turn out steam cores. But they're very, extremely, extremely valuable resources. Not to be wasted. Did we happen to bring in enough steel? No. We need a bunch more steel to start storing more coal. I could try to burn more coal. Well, no, because we're burning. We're burning it through the night here. Scouts have reached the bridge in winter to winter home. Explore the bridge. A brass plaque on the bridge tower reads, built by the people of Winterhome in AD 1887, the bridge is completely snow is kept completely snow free by a working automaton. So we explore the bridge. Now we have two options. We can either send the automaton back to the city where it will help us do stuff, or we can completely dismantle it, which will gain us two steam cores. Now, I have read a bunch of people say that the way to do this is to dismantle it and send it and, and use the steam cores because the steam cores are so valuable. It's also going to net us a lot of steel, which is what we need right now. As much as I'd like to show you the automaton in this episode, I think that it, we got to take the smart route here based on me making those stupid mistakes in the last episode and dismantle this automaton for the steam cores and the steel. Automaton taken apart. We turned the automaton off and disassembled it, extracting a decent amount of resources from it. 92 steel and 2 steam cores. As we were finishing, the first wisps of snow started to settle on the now empty bridge. Alright, our... Our scouts are carrying all those resources that they gained from the sturdy shelter and the the bridge here from disassembling the automaton so i think it's time to send them back home it will take them 16 hours to get back home i also read somewhere that is that it can actually be smarter Instead of sending them on a new path, so the path they took from our city was to go to the sturdy shelter and then to the bridge. Um, and apparently you can save time by sending them on a route that they've already cleared, which would be back to the sturdy shelter and then from there back to our city. I didn't remember that until I, after, until I started them on their trip back to the city. So we'll just let them proceed back to the city on their own this time without giving them that, those kind of waypoints. Got another message waiting for us. Deserted bridge. Finding the bridge to winter home proved that we're on the right track, but raised questions. Why was the bridge deserted? Why wasn't the automaton under the care of an engineer? There are logical explanations to it all, but people are growing anxious. Hope falls slightly, but we'll find out in winter home. Hope falls slightly. A little bit. A little bit. But soon we will have... Steel and steam cores. And hopefully we'll bring, be bringing in a little bit more food. I still got to get workers on the food there. Got three people sick and not being treated. We have the uh, both of our medical posts fully staffed. <sighs> they just need to clear out these people who are sick. These guys will be healed in about three hours so all these guys will be healed within the next 12 hours so unless we're generating even more sick people we should be able to keep this managed keep our sick levels managed uh, we just gained two more sick people with with four hours left in the night I'm gonna actually kick this into overdrive a little bit because we have the coal for it and I'm really worried about our sick levels. We've got now we've got seven people, eight people sick. They're still they're sleeping out in the cold again tonight. <sighs> All of this snowballing off of the stupid ass decision in the last or my, my my oversight in the last episode. Jeez. Yeah, that was that was horrible leaving an entire day's worth of research undone. It's really, really dumb. 
we're going to be facing the repercussions from that one stupid decision for the rest of this playthrough. Wow. We can issue another law. Is there anything we really want to issue here? Extra rations for the ill can... We don't have extra rations to share with the ill. Uh, overcrowding... The capacity of medical facilities is doubled now. Discontent will rise slightly and actually using the extra capacity will cause even more discontent. But that, that may be the way we have to go at this point based on the... The, the fact that these poor, this last group of survivors, the new arrivals, have no place to sleep for two nights in a row. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to do this. I don't want to do the overcrowding law, but I'm going to do it. We got to get... Wow, that really ratcheted up the discontent. Because not only did we issue that law, people are, in fact, using that because of all those sick people we had. All right, I think we can turn the overdrive off now. People are going to be heading to well. No, maybe not right this second because they're still here around. Wow, our discontent just went up a bunch too. Overcrowded medical facilities. So that is the result of the the people in the overcrowding from the overcrowding law actually being treated in an overcrowded situation. So man, we just we just really cranked up our discontent a bunch controversial law was signed our medical facilities are overcrowded our food is bad they're eating soup right now because I did not have enough hunters set up to go out and gather food for the new arrivals Ugh, I've really kind of pooched this playthrough in an almost ir irreparable way Come on, engineers, get back to work. Research me some bunkhouses. Work time. Good, moving. good, get moving, engineers. You can speed up time a little bit. These guys are out getting me some steel. Um, we don't have enough steel yet to actually build another storehouse, but we will soon. We need 20 steel. We've got 13, 14, 15, and then when the search party gets back, which is only four or five hours from now, we'll have lots of steel. All right, 20, 19 steel, 20 steel. All right, let's build storehouse, a resource depot, I should say. And once you build these resource depots, they can be pretty far away from the, the generator. They don't need heat. But building a resource depot, after it's built, you need to set what, res what type of resource it's going to be storing. Okay. Bunkhouses researched. Let's immediately set mm, a new research topic. Now that we're starting to get farther away from the generator, to build starther, farther away from the generator, I think we need to get our steam hubs researched. We're going to need those soon. And now immediately build a, start building our bunkhouses. Oh man, we need steel for the bunkhouses. That's right. All right. These guys will be back in two hours. That will give us probably just enough time to get a ring of bunkhouses built here so that these new arrivals don't have to spend yet another night out in the cold. I gotta build a street out to the new storehouse. And I gotta get more hunters assigned. We have no one available to do that right now. But in anticipation of the scout group coming back, I can pull a couple of people off the steel work here. Four and assign them to the hunter's hut. Now, you see this red mark over the resource hut we just built? That's telling us that we have to specify what we want stored here. We want coal stored here. Great. That takes some of the pressure off our, our coal storage supplies. Scouts number one have returned safely to the city, city, bringing back 219 wood, 92 steel, 103 food rations, and three steam cores. So, a huge trip for our scouts 
we got to immediately send them back out. Let's send them. I mean, eventually we want to reach winter home, so we should be heading back out this way. But I also want to see what we've got here. If I click on the gloomy cave, it tells us that we think we saw a faint wisp of smoke coming from it, but it's gone now. And Arctic Observatory built for the eternal winter. There's smoke over it, which means there are probably people there. Mm, a large convoy is probably packed with goodies, but we can see smoke rising from a campfire there, so there are probably also people there. The weather building is where we need to head, send people to get them closer to finding winter home. We're not trying for any achievements or anything. It really doesn't matter when we get to Winter Home. So let's send them to instead to the observatory. And maybe that'll get us some supplies and some new survivors. Probably engineers. All right, back to our city. Uh, our, our wood storage is nearing capacity. We need to start building our bunk houses so that these people are not spending yet another night out in the cold. We've got 36 homeless survivors, so we need four bunkhouses. And I need to connect those to streets. Okay. Okay. We... Uh, we need more raw food at our cookhouse, but we just brought back lots of meals so that'll keep us going until um, we get more raw food coming in a coal pile was depleted a coal pile was depleted and a gathering post resources were depleted um, we can actually disassemble this gathering post now it's not going to be doing us any good out here unless we build a another coal thumper I'm going to leave it up for now just in case we want to build another coal thumper there but we can take the the workers off of it and assign them to the hunter's hut so to bring in more raw food tonight. Our hunter's hut is only at 7% eff efficiency oh, cause just because they're all busy building stuff. They're building busy building those bunkhouses. Okay. They will head out to do hunting soon. Shelter promise fulfilled. Everyone feels relieved with a roof, even a flapping one, over their head. Hope rises. So we're okay on hope. Our discontent is falling because these guys are no longer homeless. Or fewer of them are homeless. Discontent just fell even more because these bunkhouses are getting built. And now it just fell even more. All right. Discontent is now back down to a manageable level. Uh, I think our next research project, in order to do away with the discontent that's coming from the overcrowded medical facilities, instead of building another medical post, I think what we can do is, our, as our next research project, we will use choose the medical post upgrade, which will just heal people faster and just get them through these medical posts faster and now we should not be generating as many new sick people now that our new arrivals have bunk houses in which to sleep that was a weird sound all right great we've even got extra room in, in these bunk houses now so new arrivals will a, a handful of new arrivals, anyway, won't be sleeping out in the cold if they arrive soon. All right, how's our coal house doing? Um, there should be a way to tell how much is being stored here. I don't see it. But if you just look visually, it looks like we've got two full coal piles here, and then one that's been depleted by these workers here. I think we should actually build a second gathering post to keep that coal coming in. Uh, we don't really have people to staff it, unfortunately, but... Well, we'll make do. We'll find some, some hot, warm bodies to put in there when it, once it's built. There are hunters heading out for the night. 
and that's 30 of them all together between the two hunter's huts. So they should be bringing back a good supply of raw food tonight. Generator steam stress level critical. I left this on overdrive. Oh, I left it on overdrive all day long. Holy crap. I'm sucking. I am sucking so bad. Oh, the suckage is real. Wow. Wow. You know what? I'm not going to put that person on the... Once these workers get back, once the hunters get back, we're going to need people to really start cranking out food in the cookhouse. Oh my gosh, look at our... F <laughs> the generator stress level isn't such a big deal because... Unless the temperature plummets again. Because the this will go down eventually. But the thing is, we just burned a crap load of, of coal on that. <sighs> Burning that all day and night long for no freaking reason. Oh my goodness. Wow. <sighs> but with the coal thumper working and gathering huts, gathering from this coal pile here and from the coal thumper, we're going to be bringing in coal at an okay clip. Now, our wood resources were reaching near max capacity storage-wise, but in building all those bunkhouses just now, we used up a bunch of wood. Block time. Get moving. Get moving. Go get me some more coal to replace the coal I idiotically burned. Steam hub researched. Great. I'll talk about steam hubs in a second. Let's just get this next research going right away. Medical post. And now, so steam hubs are just basically little mini generators that you put out farther away from the generator to heat areas that are super cold. It's not incredibly cold yet, so we don't, and we're not building that far away from the generator, so I'm not too worried about it. Our, actually our treatment levels are getting back down to manageable levels. There are only four sick people being treated right now, so we're not getting any discontent from overcrowded medical facilities. Um, you know, I wish I'd noticed this before choosing the medical post upgrade as our next research topic, because that doesn't seem as critical now that our medical posts have kind of thinned out a little bit. Scouts have reached the observatory. Let's check it out. Explore the observatory. Something's amiss at the observatory. Snow covers the precious instruments and the dome is open, letting out a thin column of smoke so someone is inside. Instead of astronomers, we're met with some of our lost people. They explained that they came here for help but found everybody dead. The astronomers continued their observations until they starved. What was so important for them? They wrote it up in their diaries. The loss of sunlight can't be explained solely by the fouling of the atmosphere from the southern volcanoes. The sun itself is dimming. We can either escort the survivors to the city, send them to the city, uh, which will take longer and some of them will die along the way, or may die along the way, or we can just leave them here to starve, which is horrible. We're not going to do that. But I think that we can afford to... Manpower is not that big of a deal, and I want to keep our scouts out here finding stuff. Um, so I'm just going to send these this group of survivors back. They're not that far from the city, so they should be able to make it back on their own without experiencing too many problems. Let's send our scouts now to the gloomy cave hope they don't discover even more survivors because what we really need are resources all right we are reaching the storage limit for the coal here at the coal thumper um, we need to we need to get more people in the gathering post to start clearing that out a little faster.
that's our hunters coming back from the night. Those people were not working that coal pile, so I can't take them off that. Coal pile depleted. Okay, so the good news is that the workers that were half working that coal pile and half working the coal at the thumper will now all be working the coal at the thumper. Medical post upgrade research. The sick recover 10% faster at medical post. That's, that's good. Turns out we didn't actually need that as much as we thought, but... Um, do we want more scouts or do we want upgrades? You know, we don't really need the power upgrades or the generator right now, I don't think. Really more important is unlocking this next tier to get down to the steam hub upgrades. But... Let's let's see what we can do on this. So we can increase the efficiency of our sawmills at the cost of 10 steam. Let's actually do that. Even though we're we're reaching max capacity for our wood, we should it's probably time to build another um, resource depot for the wood. Wow, I, I kind of messed up the building over here. That There's a huge gap there that can't be filled now. That'll work. Okay, once that's built, we'll set it to store wood, and then it'll make more sense to, for us to have researched that second, that upgrade for the sawmill. Our, our storage is at max capacity on the, on the thumper here. I really need more people working this gathering post. What can I pull them off of? Mm. We're doing okay steel-wise. Maybe pull one person off the steel. I don't know what else I can pull more people off of, but this group of survivors should is going to make it back here within a day or so. So we'll have more manpower coming in at that point. Speed up time again. Again, I, I really wish there was a way to, or maybe there even is, I haven't really investigated yet. Uh, is there a way to turn off that the time, the speed setting automatically bumping back to normal at certain intervals. Let's open our Book of Laws and see if there's anything that we're interested in building right now. Uh, the fighting arena is great in, in a, as a way of managing discontent. Our discontent has not been an issue yet. We're keeping these people fairly com content, so I'm not going to bother doing that. Uh, it may be time... Hold on. How many how many amputees do we have? We still only have the one amputee, so maybe building a care house isn't a huge priority. D uh, the you need to have the fighting arena res er, law issued in order to get to the public house. I don't know if you can see it. It's grayed out here. So we may want to do that. Medic apprentices, engineer apprentices. Oh, okay. Alright, so we have the children in shelters now, right? As a result of that, they can help out on light duties either in the medical facilities or in the engineer workshops. I'm going to assign them to the engineer as engineer apprentices to help out the engineers. Because it seems like our medical situation is manageable and our research is a huge, huge priority, especially in light of the mistakes I made in the last episode. So when those kids are in the during the daytime, when they're in the shelter, they'll actually be helping the engineers research stuff. But overall, I mean, look at this. We're on day what? Day 10, and we have, like, zero discontent. So we're keeping these people pretty happy. Our hope is fairly high. I would like to have even more hope being generated somehow. I'm not really sure how to go about doing that. Maybe build another child shelter. Uh, we gotta set the storage for this would be wood. We've got four steam cores not being used. Now, see at... <laughs> whoop, our discontent just ratcheted way up. What happened? 
oh, our over our medical facilities are overcrowded. They really shouldn't be. We've got ten slots. We've got two medical posts, which gives us ten slots for patients, and there are only six sick people, so I don't know why our medical facilities would be overcrowded. Instead of all of you going to one facility, why doesn't one of you go to the empty facility over here? Yeah, that doesn't make sense at all. All right, but talking about the steam cores, we had these four steam cores up here, and remember we disassembled that automaton. What we're dealing with back at base here is a, a manpower shortage. Uh, so it would be great to have... Bundle up. It's, getting cold it's getting cold. It would really be good to have uh, the automaton back here working one of these gathering houses or the, the coal thumper or something. Because when you assign an automaton to work, no other people will work there. The automaton does everything. Work time. Get moving. So the temperature has dropped down to minus 40. And this is when you got to start thinking about steam hubs. Now, click on any of these structures and you've got a temperature gauge for the structure itself up here in the upper left-hand corner of the panel that opens. As long as it's chilly or above, there is a, a low risk of people getting sick. If it falls below chili, then there is a much higher risk of people getting sick. Now, for instance, it's very cold out here at the resource depot, but that's fine because people aren't actually working in the resource depot. They're just dropping stuff, stuff off there. Same with this uh, beacon. The It's very cold at the beacon site but people aren't actually working there. It is going to be very cold out here, probably. Yeah, at the gathering posts, but instead of building a steam hub, we can just turn the heater on here. In both of these. And that will bring it up to chili. We should probably do the same at the coal thumper. So, these coal thumper, the, the heaters here, are going to be burning one coal an hour. If instead we chose to build a steam hub here, three coal per hour to heat these three buildings. So for the, in this case, it's six of one, half dozen of the other. We're not going to be saving any coal by building a steam hub here. Sawmill upgrade research, that's good. Um, a charcoal kiln will turn wood into coal. So if you're more, if you're bringing in a lot of wood and more worried about coal reserves, then the charcoal kiln is important. Let's, we've got a bunch of scouting sites and not enough scouts to go around. We've got plenty of wood to unlock this, so let's go ahead and, and research the more scouts upgrade for our beacon. We are, again, maxed out on storage at our coal thumper. Scouts have reached the gloomy cave. Let's check it out. The cave is or was inhabited. There are a number of footprints leading to the entrance. We should check if someone's still alive up there. Explore. You can hear terrified shrieks coming from a cave uphill. When we come closer, several polar bears turn toward us, blocking the entrance. There are people trapped inside, and those beasts are picking them off one by one and feasting on them. We can either leave the bears alone, which will kill all the survivors, or we can risk attacking the bears. Now, this is a dice roll, what happens if we risk attacking the bears. I had one brief playthrough where all of my scouts were killed, but we rescued all the survivors. I had another playthrough where all the scouts survived, and we rescued all the survivors. So let's roll the dice and see what happens if we risk attacking the bears. When our scouts attacked the bears, the people in the cave joined them, and together we drove the beasts away. Then they all set out toward the city. So that was a good result from attacking the bears to help those survivors. Now we will escort those survivors back to the city, and that other group of survivors is going to arrive back at the city within the next hour or so. So we're going to have a bunch of new survivors coming in here. We should probably try to plan ahead and build more shelters. Oops. We're going to have to build another child shelter soon. 
We can build more bunk houses. And we should probably build another hunter's hut in anticipation of all those hungry mouths coming into the city. We need to connect that. We need to connect all these with streets. I don't know that having streets around these rings actually does anything, but, you know, for role-playing purposes, people like streets. They don't want to be trudging through the mud every day. We have a message. Survivors reach the city. Sir, a group of survivors... It shouldn't say sir, because ladies may play this. A group of survivors has reached our city. They are tired. They'll need a place to rest, a bite to eat, and perhaps some medical attention. But they are ready to lend a hand however they can. That's great, because we need the manpower desperately. We're going to assign a bunch of them to this gathering post immediately. and a bunch of them to this hunter's hut as soon as it, it is built. Hopefully that is built before the hunters head out for the night. Our discontent is fairly high because... Uh, oh, it's, it's cold too. Uh, as soon as work time is over and people head back to their homes, I will kick this into overdrive. Notice it's still cooling down from me leaving it in overdrive all day there. Okay, we've got... We can max out the... More scouts researched. Great. We can... We can create a second team of scouts now. Uh, unfortunately, we don't really have the manpower for it. We need to get the next tier upgraded, uh, unlocked. Um... I... I I guess we're going to need this. Uh, let's unlock the second power upgrade for the generator. Well, the first power upgrade. Alright, our, our homeless issue should be going away right now with that last bunkhouse being built. Great. Discontent going down there. People are cold. I'll kick this into overdrive now that uh, people are back from work. That should lower our discontent, get rid of the cold at home issue. Yeah. Some people are still cold at home. Scouts number one have returned safely to the city, bringing with them 12 workers, 19 engineers, and four children. Let's immediately send them back out into the wasteland. There's a crash site. Large convoy. Crash site says several wrecked vehicles, no signs of life. L they're probably our machines, let's hope so. We had to leave a number of supplies in them after the crash. That's great, because we don't want more uh, survivors coming back to the city right this second. We just got that two new groups back in there. So let's make sure that they're all settled and squared away before we start bringing more people back. We do need supplies, so we'll head the head, uh, send them back out. Just to reiterate again, I'll say it again, we've got four steam cores not being used up here. I guess it's good to have a stockpile of steam cores, but to be quite honest, I would much rather have that automaton back here at base. I wish we had not disassembled that automaton and instead walked him back to base. But, you know, I, I, I read in a bunch of different places that the way to deal with that encounter in the long run is to harvest the steam cores from that automaton. I'm, I'm not seeing that to be the case so far, but we'll see how this goes. Uh, another... Oh, this is another... This is the next group of people coming back in, and they're going to need places to sleep. Oh, we need steel for that. Oh, boy. Well, we can put a bunch of engineers on this steel pile, which will really bring in the steel quickly tomorrow. And is that the only... That's our final steel pile, so we got to start thinking about getting a 
uh, steel works built, researched and built back out here. We are... I, I can't tell how far we are along on the generator upgrade. Yeah, so these dudes are going to have to spend the night outside tonight. I'm going to max out the hunters. Maybe it's not too late for these hunters to actually head out tonight. We got loads of engineers here. We got 20 unemployed engineers and four idle workers. It may be time to build a third medical post, but I think I'm going to hold out, wait for us to research infirmaries, which is going to be on the next tier of research. So let's get that next tier unlocked as a, a priority, and let's also get a steel works unlocked as our next priority. These peeps are going to be cold tonight. Oh my gosh. Alright, it's work time. I'm taking that... Taking the generator off overdrive. Let that cool down a bit. And here come our hunters back from the hunt. Bringing back with them a bunch of raw food. Alright, we're bringing in a bunch of food here. Alright, we should be okay. Uh, there are so many hungry people right now that I'm, I'm actually going to switch to soup for the time being. Our discontent is at a manageable level. Once uh, um, all the sick people get cleared out, we'll be in even better shape. And our uh, once we get these, these homeless people housed. A citizen became gravely ill with frostbite. And generator power upgrade one researched. Good. Now we were going to research uh, the the steelworks, and with another gravely ill patient, we should start thinking about building a coal house for them. Wow! Are we are out of raw food. Again. Again, man, our hunters are not bringing eno enough raw food. So something else that we need to be thinking about researching and unlocking is the hothouse. This is another way of supplying raw food. We can get 30 raw food per day from a hothouse. Now, notice that you need a steam core to build a hothouse. You need a steam core to build a lot of these advanced... Uh, the more advanced stuff. The steel works does not need it. A wall drill does need it. A coal mine does need it. So that's when we're going to start burning through our steel cores. Boy, we're getting up toward max storage on our coal again. We're going to have to... Uh, we're going to have to build another storage house for that. We have enough steel coming in now that we can start building more bunkhouses for people. Let's see if we can keep them on the second ring as much as possible. That's it. That's all the second ring room we have. Scouts have reached the crash site. Explore the crash site. We are going... We stand to... Uh, that's where our expedition was split up when our vehicles crashed during a snowstorm. Some of our precious supplies should be there. Explore it. Plenty of priceless supplies in the wrecks of the expedition. Searching among the crates sc scattered in the snow, behind the wrecks we found the bodies. They're tangled together in a single frozen mass, as if these people were trying to find at least a bit of warmth just before they died. We can do nothing for them, not even bury them. We'll take 150 wood and 47 raw food from this site. And let us send our scouts back to the city with those supplies since they kind of have to go this way to the, get to the next group of, of sites anyway. And we can start another scout party here. We may have the, the manpower to do that. We've got 
20 unassigned engineers and 4 unassigned um, workers, we can... We can pull an engineer off... Uh, we can pull a worker off something and replace it with an engineer. Why don't we do that in one of the... It seems smart to do that at the coal thumper. And now build a second scout party. Use it. This takes 40 wood. And now send them to... So let's try this kind of waypoint thing. Um, they've already found their way. So if I click on the large convoy, it tells us that it will take one day and 17 hours to arrive. If I click on the bridge, it will only take 16 hours to arrive at the bridge. So it does seem to make sense to send them to the bridge first and then on to the large convoy from there. Okay. Time to rest, folks. Works out today. Yep. Y'all can go home. We can issue a law. Now that we've got another amputee, why don't we go ahead and issue the care house law? That's going to bring our hope up, for one thing. And it will... It will clear out our medical posts a little bit. Well, it means more beds and food f for the rest of us. That's good. It's the best we can do for them right now. I agree. Let's check our message. People are hungry. We have three days to feed everyone. Let's feed them and stockpile some food. Both of these are kind of risky considering our, our current situation. Hmm. Let's try to feed everyone within three days. Uh, now that we've switched over to soup here, that shouldn't be too hard but it does seem like with no meals ready to eat now might be a good time to issue the extended shift that only says emergency shift how do we do extended shift Didn't we issue the extended shift law? It, our, our extended shift law is signed. I've never used it before, so I'm not sure. You can extend the workday to any facility to 14 hours. Working overtime causes discontent. Discontent will rise slightly. I get that. So shouldn't I be able to click on the cookhouse? And shouldn't there be a... An extended shift button here? Ah, uh, not sure how to do that. If anybody knows, please post it in the comments or I will look it up when this is over. <sighs> you know, until I can figure out how to do the extended shift, I'm going to order emergency shift on this because we have no food right now. Zero. Zero meals ready to eat. It is chilly in here, but it's just going to have to happen. We've still got 12 homeless people. We need to build more bunkhouses for them. And this is really where we're going to have to start thinking about making use of the steam hubs because these are going to be these houses are going to be well out beyond the range of the heater. And now might be we might it's almost midnight. We might want to consider kicking this into overdrive for the night. Look at how high our discontent got suddenly. Our overcrowded medical facilities, people are cold, people are hungry, and we've got an emergency shift running. So, yeah, not great, not great. People none too happy with my leadership, and who can blame them? Things are not going great at the moment. Which, to be quite honest, seems like maybe a good place to end this episode. Uh, we've got a lot of challenges facing us, which is something to kind of look forward to or uh, anticipate. Either we're going to see horrible negative results 
coming from these from the bad decisions I've made in the next next episode, or we'll see me actually figure out a way to deal with all these challenges that we're facing right now. So thanks for watching, everybody. Leave a like and subscribe if you're enjoying this Frost Punk playthrough, and there'll be more Frost Punk adventures in the next episode. Stay safe. Stay warm.